How's everybody doing today? This is the wonderful city of New York that I'm visiting right now. And want to give you guys an energy update for oil and gas. Um, so let's talk about where oil and gas is at, right? So there are still capital constraints. Uh, the drilling companies are still making the same money they did from like $70 oil prices, um, high 60s a few months ago. They're still getting the income from that again because once they pull it out of the ground, it takes like two or three months to actually get it processed and sold. Sometimes they can pre-sell it. So they say, hey, we're you know, drilling this much out of the ground. They can find a selling. They can find a buyer. Sometimes they sell it once it's already pre-made. But um, it typically takes a few months. So us as mineral investors, we get paid when they do. Technically, we get paid before they do, right? Um, as, this, as per the state's requirements. But when they make money, we do too. Right now, uh, the energy companies are not necessarily hurting for capital, they kind of are, but they can't get loans from banks because of a lot of stuff I can go into later, right? Most time, most of it's administration and such. Um, and also they're, they're getting lower returns because oil was, you know, high 60s, low 70s a few months ago, right? It spiked up to like 90, 92, something like that. And then it's, uh, it's down a bit on fears and short selling actually so short people shorting oil which i'll get into later but the energy companies do see what's on the horizon and they are preparing right but they have to have that capital for it and so we're expecting a lot of drilling a lot of new projects to start happening on our minerals and others um between now and december january uh to march of next year right there's actually one oil and gas company that I know of that was that had a project come through and uh, they're gonna drill it now. They're gonna buy it right now. They're going to cap it. They're not gonna, they're not going to uh, extract and they're gonna wait till next summer to frack and pull it out. Now, you and me as mineral owners were like, why in the world would they wait? I'm gonna get paid right now, right? Um, well, part of as mineral owners, part of the thing we had to do is just <clears throat> trust that the energy companies they know more about oil than we do. These billion dollar companies know a little more than we do, right? Um, and that gets me to my second point, right? Of what's happening in the industry. Right now, suppliers are coming down on prices. So energy is a, is a, um, a business, a company, just like flipping a house, right? When you flip a house, you've got a, you know, typically you have to do some repairs and such like that. You've got suppliers or contractors that you hire out to help flip, flip that house anyhow you have suppliers or contractors that you have that you're doing work to help flip that house right and that's part of the math you have to do when you're flipping a house to see if it's worth it right see if you're gonna make money on it oil and gas same thing right um, they've got drillers frack teams etc you know they got a price of water and sand and delivery and timing to get it out there and so think of it like this in the last probably six 12 months there's been rising prices on all of those things to the point to where um, these contractors are just raising the price and like yeah we'll get to you when we get to you here's the price um, or you can pay us a lot more and we'll get to you faster <laughs> um, and think of that as as a house flipper if we were stuck with that what would we do well, we'd probably just kind of pony up on it or just try to get a better deal or something. These energy companies, they've got tons of residuals coming in, right? They had record profits in, I think, 2022 and part of 2023. And so right now, so they've been holding off on that for quite a bit because they've got to pay for those things, right? So in other words, the frack team, they told them to kind of go pound sand until your prices get, get lower. Well, they're starting to feel that now. It took like six to nine months it's starting to go down and so a lot of oil and gas companies the smart ones are taking advantage of that that price decline and saying okay we'll start to buy your product now we'll start to get these people in cap it uh frack it etc etc right so they're taking advantage of that so we're seeing more drilling we're seeing more drilling on our acreage and others and so this will eventually lead to some amazing profits all right let's talk about what the big boys are doing right uh, I'm going to go over three of them, Buffett, Chevron, and Exxon. So what are they doing? They're actually buying more energy assets, right? And again, these guys are the big boys. 
day, when they make moves in the market, they're very calculated because any move they make is going to create big waves. They're not small fish like you and me, right? They, I think Buffett's got, Berkshire Hacksworth, he's got $37 billion or $137 billion, something like that. My, my numbers are probably off, but you get my drift, right? You and I probably don't have a billion dollars. I'd be willing to bet. Um, but any move they make is going to make ripples in the market, right? And uh, a little while ago, Buffett bought, I think, 10% of Oxy. Oxy. Why does everyone in New York have to honk? Anyway, Buffett bought like 10% of Oxy, and then he applied to buy up to 50% of it. Um, and currently, he now owns 24%, right? So what does that tell you? <laughs> um, Occidental's in his eyes, is doing something good, right? It has a very good potential future. Um, Exxon bought Pioneer, a shale, a vi like one of the best shale companies, uh, oil and gas companies in the world. Uh, they bought them for $60 billion, $60 billion. Chevron bought, brought, bought Hess for $57 billion, I think it was. Um, so what does this mean in the long term? What this means, what are the big boys signaling is my point. What this means is that they are seeing a very good long-term future for oil and gas. These big companies aren't traders. They're not gonna buy it today and then sell it in a week or a month. They've got long-term buy and hold strategies, especially Chevron and Exxon, right? They don't do anything that, that doesn't have a five-year minimum plan on it. So what does that tell you and me and other little fish to do? Well, invest in energy in the long term, right? Um, be there for the long term because these guys are betting on it and they, they know why. In other words, when Chevron and Exxon start to buy these other companies, they buy the leases, they buy, they buy everything they own, right? So what they're saying is it's a 60, 57 to $60 billion acquisition is a great price or maybe even discounted one when they look at it over a period of a five to 10 to 15, the next five to 10 to 15 years. They know something we don't, right? So let's just follow the big fish, right? Um, we're thinking they're, they're looking at the leases and everything, the value of it, and what oil and gas will do and say, hey, it is easier to buy a company, maybe even pay a ton for it right now, than to have to go in and acquire those leases um, manually and buy them, right? So that says something about the future of oil and gas. It's going to be tight, it's going to be a tight market, and it's going to be good for the next quite a bit. It's going to have higher lows and probably higher highs too as well. All right, next year's election year. So what does that mean? It means a lot of stuff is going to stop. Um, a lot of stuff is going to come to a grinding halt because there is, nobody knows what's going to happen. And when this happens, you're going to have a lot of just standstill in the market. So you might see a lot of prices just flatline, et cetera. Um, I've got a stinking suspicion that, well, I'll put on my, uh, my hat later and depending, let's put it this way, if the economy really tanks next year, we're gonna have a different president. In the history of the US, a sitting president in a bad economy has never ever been reelected. So my point is next year, you're probably gonna see a lot of things just flatline a lot of big investors are going to be de-risking or just holding because they don't know what's going to happen in the next four years. They don't want to invest a lot of money right now and the rules change in 12 months. Lastly, let's talk about working interest, right? Um, so normally I talk about minerals in this because they are amazing assets, very de-risk. Working interest is different. It's got a higher payout or a higher potential payout, but there is risk to it associated with it, right? This is why you get such a great tax benefit. Right now, to the end of the year, it's, it's 80%. Last year was 100% write-off. Uh, next year is gonna be 60%. Right there with those numbers, what does that tell you about oil and gas? There's gonna be less investment into it because there's less of a tax incentive to do it, right? And therefore, there's gonna be less exploration, less drilling, Yeah. Right? But I want you to know, there may be some uh, working interest opportunities coming up. I know everybody jumps on the tax breaks, and I made videos on this before. But if you don't get, in short, if you don't get your money back, it's not a tax break; it's a loss, right? Which you can write all of it off anyway. Um, so you have to make sure the risks fit the rewards. And I've gone through tons of um, 
uh, of, of drilling companies. I'll name a few. Uh, King, Texahoma, Mission Resources, KY Energy, uh, sorry, KJ Energy. I mean, the list goes on, right? Um, but there are very few that I'm going to risk my funds with. I'd rather put in minerals or uh, and pay taxes or just pay taxes and hold it, right? It's better to lose 30 to 37% to taxes than 100% to a bad deal, okay? So I'm gonna leave you guys with that. If you have any comments, questions, let me know, but this is just a little update I wanted to give you on where oil is at. Uh, we see a lot of people, again, a lot of um, companies starting to drill and they'll frack either early next year or mid to late next year. And then 20 to, to uh, excuse me, uh, two to three months, we're gonna get we're gonna get our payouts as they should be good. So there's gonna be a lot of I'm expecting a lot of good things. And again, mineral rights. And again, mineral rights is something you want to look at on the yearly, as opposed to hey, how's it doing this month? How's it doing that the other month? Type thing. Um, it's slow, but man, as you see in my spreadsheets, it can be super profitable. Out of all of mine, the ones that are firing off with everything that we had hoped not not promised but hoped that would happen, some came out even better but I'm making about 40% ROI uh, on average, right? Uh, the ones, if you combine them all, I'm around 20% give or take, and so I'm, I'm a happy camper with it. I hope you'll join me in those. We do have a few deals coming up. Um, if you're interested in working interest, let me know ASAP. We may have a deal coming up around Thanksgiving. Right now, it, it's super tight. Um, we're looking for the best deals and not ones that we're going to, that are super risky, and so that, that edits a lot out, especially when there's a lot of competition for money and such, right? Um, but we do have a, but I've heard of the grapevine, there is a amazing deal on mineral rights coming up. Um, long story short, the seller had to sell very quickly, we'll go over the story later, uh, but they sold to cash buyer and it may be the best price minerals I've ever bought in my life. So stay tuned.